Typhoid! Well, there we go. A short trailer for... Um, God, how do I get us all on the screen? A short trailer for the boot camp that we're going to be doing in Mexico City uh, very soon. It's uh, What are the dates? The, the 2nd of October to the 5th? 5th to the 8th of October. I just said my memory was getting better. I just said my memory's getting better. Fucking hell, look at that. You can't stop the onset of dementia, can you? You really can't. Uh, sorry, 5th to the 8th of October. So we're going to be in Mexico City. It's going to be an absolute... It's going to be an absolute blast. Um, if you have been sitting on the fence about doing some training with, with us and you haven't taken action yet, then this is definitely the time to do it because it's going to be the last big boot camp of the year. And also, it's just going to be an absolute blast. It really is. Um, lots of beautiful senoritas. And yeah, it's just a fantastic place. I'm very much looking forward to it. And we got Nikki in the house. Maybe she wants to pay us and come on the boot camp. After all of this value that Nikki's had from watching our stream, the least she can do really is shell out to come on the boot camp with us. It's only it's only two thousand nine. What is it? Two two thousand nine hundred seventy nine. Yeah, so it's it's almost fifteen hundred pounds cheaper than normal. Exactly. It's so Nikki, put your put your hand in your pocket. Is basically the message of this. So what are we talking about today, then, gentlemen? How to day game in twenty twenty three as a man with edge. So for context, uh, myself and Troy have been running a program called The Edge, which essentially is, is meant to jack up more of the kind of dark tried and masculine and sexualized traits guys often seem to be lacking when they start getting social with the, with the with, well, being so they start becoming more social, but they're still doing it in nice guy mode. And yeah. they still don't really get the results they're after. The course that me and Troy are running currently, The Edge version two, is designed to kind of to, to, to soup up these areas that we feel are missing, that X factor um, that separates the wheat from the chaff. And, and uh, yeah. Les has been kindly jumping on and helping us out. And we're running a few bonus ones. And we thought we'd give something back to the great unwashed, of course, so <laughs> on, on YouTube for the great unwashed to see for free. And I think the reason for this stream was because we were going through areas like hormone management and fitness and, things like that on the, the the group with guys but then we were getting kind of ba very basic basic questions seemingly basic questions for the approaching stuff as well mm. and i think it's probably worth going back over how well now you know given our opinions tend to change every few months as we get older and, and become more experienced how we would say now guys should be approaching 2023 in a post instagram world um is the London day game model still relevant? Is it actually more about just looking as good as possible, good looking loser style and jacking yourself up on trend and cocaine and going in for the hit? I mean, these are all <laughs> questions that we can answer in due course. Yeah. I mean, um, I think as far as the, the question about is the London day game model still relevant? I would say broadly speaking, yes. I mean, as a structure, I think it, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that is still fundamentally what we teach, but then it, as a structure, it's, it's actually incredibly basic, isn't it? Really? It's not like it's, I mean, it was, it was heralded as this amazing thing at the time and it's helped a lot of people, but really it's not actually that complicated. It's kind of how a conversation of that type you would expect to go anyway, isn't it? I think that's a great point. And I think the point should be guys need to be doing this devil may care, charming, self-amusing, playful vibe should just propagate every conversation at the beginning with anyone, because why not? It's fun for you. It's fun for them. And it's engaging. I think where people get really caught up to their detriment with this stuff is when they become these robots with the London day game model. And we know a few guys in common who do that and you don't really evolve. You become this one trick pony that's stuck doing these kind of like semi you know, robotic routines on the streets. And then the problem is you haven't developed the social intelligence and the emotional intelligence and the banter and the flirting skills so that you can outside of that context actually maximize the opportunity with the woman. Yeah. Because you have to go on dates and you have to text and there's going to be situations that you haven't, she's going to test you and all this stuff. And if, if you basically just got this, this party trick down on the street, but nothing else, uh, you've developed that one bit of the skill set. You're kind of fucked, aren't you, really? Yeah, you are. You are. So um, there's a good question here to kick us off with, really, which is what is the London style? I'm hearing of it for the first time. Well, it's I mean, the Gangnam style. If you ever saw that video, that, uh, that chink dancing around like a pony. What was that one? <laughs> Gangnam style. <laughs> 
don't know. Les, do you want to, do you want to are chime you talking in? About, are you talking about Mr. Silk approaching or? <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to chime in and uh, explain Silk what it is? How does he feel? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> for clarity, what is the London Day Game model? Okay, basically, approach. So we normally approach with a compliment, say, hey, I just saw you, you look very nice, I wanted to come and say hello, you look very really cute, whatever. Then you make some kind of observation about her. Oh, but you're wearing all black and it's a super sunny day. What's going on? Are you going to, you know, well, I don't say you go to a funeral, but, you know, you, you, you make some kind of observation about her. Or the classic is you look French, you look Italian, you don't look like you're from here. Maybe you're Latin American. I'm sensing Argentinian. She says, no, no, actually, I'm from Brazil. You're like, oh, that's really cool because I was just in Brazil. This happened, that happened, blah, blah, blah. You vibe a little bit. So that's the next bit. So you've got open uh stack which is basically make observations and then vibe on what she comes back with okay so you're vibing you're waiting then for the hook point which is when she appears to be invested in the conversation so maybe she asks you a question she's like oh so how long have you been in london for or how long have you had your dick in your hand in london for or whatever and then at that point you're gonna know that she's you know she, she's obviously somewhat interested in talking to you because she's prolonging it which women won't normally do um, if they're not interested at all. So then you can dial it down a little bit and go into more like normal sort of regular guy conversations. Just like, yeah, I'm working here. You know, I normally come to this cafe, you know, and sit down and do a bit of work in the morning. How about you? Oh, you go to the gym over there. That's interesting. So you're studying, blah, blah, blah. Find out a little bit about each other. Make sure she knows a little bit about you too. This is more like the comfort rapport stage. And then close. Say, listen, this, this has been great. I've got to head to a meeting, but you seem really cool. Let's exchange numbers and I'll drop you a message during the week. So that's it. That's the basic structure. Exactly. The lesson here, the lesson ended. Yeah. Um, right, so so, so um, that, that, that's the basic structure, the very bare bones of the structure. And so whole books have been written, on, like, like massive, massive textbooks have been written about this stuff. And obviously people have different lines that they use and, you know, I don't know, different ways of approaching the stacking, like use it, different things that they, you know, advice about the vibing and all this kind of thing. And this is where we get into the weeds of it a little bit. And I think this is where we get somewhat annoyed sometimes with the, the sort of game purists where, you know, there's a lot of conversation online and even in groups that we run where guys are like, oh, you know, well, if I'd have used a different, if I'd have stacked differently, you know, would it have, you know, oh, I, I asked her about her job, but maybe I should have said that she looked like a giraffe instead. And then, you know, would that have changed the outcome? A lot of this stuff is complete bollocks, to be honest, because firstly, because the first thing is most women aren't going to like you anyway. That's the reality. So most women are going to reject you anyway. So that's that's one thing. They're not available. They're not into you. You're not their type. Secondly, what's really going to make the difference, in my opinion, is the vibe between the two of you. It's the emotional impact you have on her. It's not about, did you come out with the cleverest line? Did you use the, the, the Torero toe or any of that bullshit? It's like, how, what, how are you making her feel? <laughs> so what are some pointers then maybe for creating maximal emotional impact? Be an edgy guy, really. Yeah. Which is, you know, yeah. So I think it, there's so much to this, isn't there? Really. It's... it's, it's it's so nuanced. Firstly, it's it's how you look, it's how you dress, you know, like so how are you presenting yourself? You know, if you're presenting yourself as a super normy, boring dude, like I was out with this guy at the weekend, I was coaching, we went out for a coaching session. I said to him, You look, you look excessive, you look almost offensively nice guy. Because the dude, he was a lovely bloke, but he looked like Hugh Grant with his floppy hair and he was wearing like a nice polite t-shirt and his socks pulled up and his sensible plimp sole trainers, you know, and it, it's like what is that communicating to the women? It's not communicating, you know, there's something about me. I've got a little bit. Maybe I've got some rough edges, blah, blah, blah. So firstly, what are you wearing? How do you look? How, and, and then it's down to things like tonality, eye contact. You know, do you agree with everything she says? Like if you say, so what, so what are you doing? She goes, I work in Starbucks. Do you go, oh, wow, that's a, oh, Starbucks. That's amazing. Yeah, I love Starbucks. Or do you go, all oh, right, okay, so what, what else do you do? You know, like, are you appraising of her or are you just like a nodding dog? There's so many different aspects to it, I think. Yeah, that's true. And um, I think this idea of rolling in. Um, well, I think I think the key thing for creating emotional impact is 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 showcasing to her through your vibe and, and your thoughts that you're you're you want to fuck her. Really? I yeah. think that, that's so polarizing for women in a good way. Um, one of the coaches who 
has the you know the verbal game skills of a fucking scare a rotting scarecrow brett in in norway the one thing he does incredibly well is he looks at the girls like he wants to fuck them and yeah. so they buy in and they, or they buy out extremely fast they know exactly what he wants and they're either down or they're not and he does very little banter right there's many ways to skin a proverbial cat i know that yeah. Myself and, and Troy and Les like to be more quite verbal. We just enjoy it where we can. Sometimes the conversations are dire, but when we get on a roll, we can have fun with it and we come across as quite playful. But um, I think this idea of, of, uh, of really projecting your sexual intent and getting comfortable doing that is such a, such a key missing piece to create that, that emotion. And women understand, they, they're like, okay, he gets it. He's looking at me yeah. like he wants to fuck me. He's not a pussy, basically. He doesn't have to say it. Now, this is where the purists get it wrong and Alan Roger Nutsack, may he rest in peace, you know, go, going up and, and sitting next to someone's grandmother at a, you know, a, a Thanksgiving and shouting, I want to bang you, it, you know, is not a correct way of, of doing, approaching in my opinion. Um, whereas you can be a lot more <laughs> nuanced and you can look at the girl with that cheeky look in your eyes. You're, you're, you're actually projecting that you're picturing her naked and she feels, how does it feel? She feels that you want her, right? And, and women want to be wanted. But it's very clever because you're not verbally saying it, right? I, I want you, I need you. It's like, okay, this is what I'm about. Are you are you in or are you out? It's all done very subtly. So I think that's the real, the X factor, the London day game model didn't really cover. Terreri talked about it a bit, didn't he, with his tiger eye stuff. Um, but yeah. I mean, it wasn't sold out to the masses. I think the masses just thought, let's stick to the structure and you can kind of avoid the actual projecting sexual intent piece. But yeah. the, the good thing is, if guys are nervous about doing that, because we all carry sexual shame to some degree, I can speak from my experience, getting jacked up on hormones and TRT takes care of that for you because you're so horny. You naturally ooze that when you're talking to women. Men yeah. feel like you can fight them and women feel like you're going to fuck them. And really, that, that subconscious, the subliminal part is taken care of. So then you can just focus yeah. on it. And, and that's also why we bang on about learning combat sports, learning to fight, all that kind of thing. Because again, it's it's sort of trying to bring out that more animalistic side of your of your nature, right? Um, and so this, yeah. this, uh, this other piece to mix in that we're, we're all aware of now, this testing for interest piece, I think that's a nice yeah. nuance to bring in as well. So for guys, we don't have any affiliation with him, just to be clear, old Robert Glover, who wrote No, no More Mr. Nice Sack. I mean, nice guy. He, no, he, reached out with people he, he wants. He, he wants nothing to do with us. He repeatedly blanks my emails for requests for interviews. So, uh, whatever. But he wrote a a really good, and he, he lifted this, I think, from Good Looking Loser because he he said in his book he did loads of research from different people when he was coming into the market at fifty as a single guy, and I think he yeah. basically took Good Looking Loser's screening concept and called it testing for interest. But essentially, he's 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 saying don't be attached to the outcome. Go up and say your piece, you know, and just be aware is the goal, you know, go through the process, flirt with her, play, be playful, but just not be attached to the outcome and really see, is she high interest? I carry on the conversation, I push it further. Or is she low interest? I just leave it. And that yes. is it's a clever tactic because it takes away the need for an outcome and it develops your social intelligence skills in the moment to actually see if someone's interested or not, rather yeah. than being like, I need a result, which gives guys a lot of anxiety, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the main reason why I've really had any success with this is is not so much because of my verbal dexterity. Although, you know, it, it's pretty good. I mean, it's got better over the years, I think. But I think it was more about sexual intent. But again, you know, we have to be very clear. This has to be nuanced. You know, we were talking to a dude in our group recently, and he basically left a voice note for this girl, or he sent this girl a message and basically wrote... So have you thought about having sex with me yet or something like that? It's too obvious. It's too on the nose. You know, you, you, you don't want to. The whole thing about flirtation is its implication more than it is verbally. Because if you verbally just blurt it out, then you're going to sort of <clears throat> kill the vibe. You're going to kill the golden goose, kill the suspense, if you like. So it's got to be sort of implied. It's playful. But eye contact is super, super, super important. It really will do a lot of the hard work for you. That's a, that's a great point. So what are some ways guys can to, can work on that eye contact and, and that sexual intent projection? Um, well, hypnosis would be one. I've got we've got a good hypnosis, which is good yeah. for this. That could work quite well. You, but could any other... you could try affirmations as well. You know, you could be. I am a sexy beast. 
I yeah, am a sexy beast. I am a sexy. Yeah, beast. you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sexual, I'm a sexual animal. You know, women want me or something like. I, I don't know. You know, it's a bit cringe, but the, but it does actually work. You know, if you if you have some affirmations and you repeat themselves to you to yourself like ten times each per day, it does actually start to embed in your subconscious. That's very true. I, and actually, the guy I was with, who he's a he's a very cool guy, um, just came down, uh, spent some time with him in in the Viv in Kiev. He was talking about visualization. From the dude who it seems to be a bit of a, a cowboy. I can't remember his name, but he's quite famous on YouTube. He's always talking about it. He's some like doctor, but he's not actually a doctor. He's an older dude. Mm. But he seems to be around to be quite successful. But anyway, he, he talks a lot about visualization, right? Something that athletes do, high performers do. This guy's, the client's uh, nuance to this was, he's telling me, the problem with trying visualization, because he does it for being good with women, was you just a bit like mindfulness you just forget and you just you drift off in thought but if you're saying it out loud to yourself at, mm. as you're visualizing it you stay on topic for 10 15 20 minutes which you can do and it really beds it down so that's a that's something to think about obviously we're not saying to guys walk around the street loudly saying i'm a sexual threat that's yeah. probably get you arrested um uh, knowing the <laughs> uncalculated nature of most of the guys that watch our content but maybe it has, not yeah. of your it has to be under the radar you know, it has to be implied, but it has to be strongly implied enough that she picks up on it. You know, I think she has to know when you go into the approach or the interaction or whatever it is, she has to know that you're hitting on her. She has to know. I get it. This guy, I I know what this guy's here for. You know, she can feel she can feel it. Now, again, you know, not every woman is going to be interested in you and that that's fine. You know, if she's not. She's not. That's great. You just say goodbye and walk off. But if there is a glimmer of interest in there, that's going to massively amplify it because women like you said want to be wanted they want to be seen as desirable and sexy by men that they desire and a lot of guys unfortunately and tom used to say this would basically hide their dick so that is to say they hide the sexual intent partly maybe because of shame but also i think because of fear of rejection because it feels very personal if you're kind of putting it on the line that you are sexually attracted to somebody and then they reject you that feels very painful or it can feel very painful, but you've got to let go of that and realize it just, it, you know, it doesn't matter. She's one woman out of what, five billion or however many there are on the planet. So, you know, it's irrelevant. Um, you've got to just let go of that and, 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 and be true to your core, basically, which is wanting to have sex. Yeah. And, and this is, you know, this is Bonaparte talks about this, a sex coach, but he goes, every man's birthright is good sex. And it, it, in, a, in a way, he's, it sounds a bit cheesy, but he's actually right. Because the only, you know, evolutionary wise, the only reason you're on this the, the earth is you're born you reproduce and you die now whether you actually have kids is a personal choice but that doesn't you're not uncoupled from your programming to want to have sex with young women in their prime right so if there is shame around that that's something you need to look at because women are going to be able to pick up on that yeah yeah for sure for sure Les, what's, what's something your take? You've, you've got a brooding brooding sort of yeah. you know, right about you I appreciate that, Troy. <laughs> um, no, I think something something that helped me um, a lot in terms of becoming more sexual in conversations was pushing the boundaries when having sex. So getting a lot more comfortable with banging girls and, and just always pushing it a little bit and seeing what one could get away with and getting really comfortable in that environment. And then the more comfortable I got in that environment, I could project that onto more girls because... I think the more girls you approach and at the beginning, we think all girls are little sweethearts. We, you know, we see them walking down the street in the nice flowery dress and we think, oh, you know, what a little daddy's girl. And then, you know, a few days later, she's, you know, a quivering puddle of sexual fluids in the corner of the bed. And I think the more we can associate uh, approaching girls and just the, the transition or the ability that girls have to turn into those sexual animals, we can treat them more from more from that angle. Right. And I really believe that girls can feel that. Like they, they can feel when a guy just gets it because he looks at them in a certain way. He's comfortable. Um, there's no shame. And this goes back to what you were saying, James, as well, in terms of having the sexual shame and, and just being comfortable. And I really think that the more comfortable you are as a guy in being very sexual with women, I believe women fall into that frame of becoming very sexual with you. And I think the yes. only way to do that is to get yourself into as many sexual situations as possible as you know what was that guy um no more mr nice guy um you know just fuck bang a few fatties yeah. if you need to right you know if you need to get the experience well, you need to get the experience <laughs> it's an or maybe well, mr well, m took it to heart but... 
Yeah, that's a, I, I know what you mean. I, I think um, <laughs> I know what you mean. I mean, it's that's a kind of debatable point, isn't it? Really, because he says, "Yeah, for, go for you know." Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've but, never done no, that but, before. But, but, but the but, but the fundamental point <laughs> about <laughs> increasing your sexual and again, you know, people people might be watching this and thinking, "Well, you know, it's you know, it's chicken or egg then," because like if I can't get sex, you know, you know, it's the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, right? But the reality is, mm -hmm. the more sort of sexual experience you've got. I was saying this to my client at the weekend because his um, you know, his his count, his body count was fairly low. <laughs> And I was saying to him, well, look, I mean, if you and he was saying, well, I'm very picky. And I was saying, well, OK, that's that's fine. But I mean, if you if you increase that by five times, you know, just that amount of sexual exposure that you had would naturally emanate from you when you're dealing with other women. They yeah. to say that. And I think that's the, the main thing. Yeah, I, I know. And just, I agree. Um, 100%. I'm not a I wasn't I'm not really an advocate of this kind of quasi religious no fat movement. But I do think if you cut porn and stop fapping and you've got your hormones dialed in, you're just going to be so animalistically horny that women sense it. You get more IOIs, you're in conversations with women and just the vibe you're projecting without actually changing your behavior is different on a pheromonal level. They can just sense that you're basically oozing masculinity, sexual, ma sexualized masculinity. And mm -hmm. it's just a different ball game altogether. Um, yes. If you, can, if you can do dial those, those things in and, and stop masturbating. It is. I mean, you are literally draining your energy, right? I know, Troy, you're a bit sceptical about the whole how much benefit does it have. But I think mm -hmm. if you are not, if if you're not, I mean, just from my experience, kind of mucking around with it the last few months, I'm just way more, I'm way more effective in life when I'm not fucking masturbating, really. And I am going out having sex, right? But I'm not just masturbating, draining myself with that energy, not watching porn. I think when you combine that with the hormone management, it, it is supercharged, actually. But you're not you're not matrix just you're not matrix tricksing it, are you? Where you're not uh you know you're 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 retaining your seed even during sexual intercourse. The full body orgasms. Um I mean I'm, I just the image of, of anyone doing that is just amazing. Because I, I remember seeing this woman on YouTube and this guy, this co absolute con artist called like Stefan Shambo, who's basically just a horny bull dude who did the A game, couldn't get laid, he went into like a cult leader for tantric stuff just to just to get laid. Uh, Terraria would be spinning his grave when he snake seduction. Um, but he was like kind of whispering, you know, jiggling his hands over some woman, and she's in the you know, lying down, just vibrating like a salmon out of water. Just the image of it is just fucking fantastic. It's all a bit, really. cr all a bit cringe, really. Um, Ryan says, quitting porn, having cold showers every day, lifting weights, and learning martial arts will take your masculinity to new heights and will make you into Rich Cooper. I think that's what it says. Um, <laughs> yes, you, know, you know, you know, him, I mean, right, this is, actually. yeah, he's, you know he's, right. he's right. He's probably right, but this is, this is all very boilerplate manners. But you know who he, you, you have met him before, you do realize. What, who? Ryan. Ryan. Oh, is it Ryan as in um, Irish, Irish Ryan? There's two Irish Ryans, but not fat oh. Irish Ryan, uh, serial killer Irish Ryan from Warsaw. Is it serial killer Irish Ryan? Yeah. Oh, okay. No offense, man. Sorry. I'm sorry if I could. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, I mean, I, I agree with you. It, um, it is no boilerplate, but it, no, it I'm no, I'm, 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 I'm joking. I mean, no, he's he's right. Um, it's 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 that this is the kind, of, and this is why this stuff is the kind of standardized, you know, like manosphere of vice, isn't it? Because it is going to take you to the next level. Um, James, just a quick question know, on that. So you're not only, using for yeah, anything, but you're still banging loads of chicks, and you still got that energy. Say, so you're saying. I'm yeah. having sex, but it's a different. I'm having lots of adventure sex because I'm just pushing. Because you're, when you get jacked up on hormones, seemingly for me, I give far less fucks about everything. So all I'm trying to do is have sex in public places on dates. So I've been, I've been having sex in bathrooms, random hotel bathrooms a lot, uh, and that supercharges me. You know, I feel more energized after that because it's just a crazy experience. But um, no, mm. I've, I've stopped. To be honest, I really I'll have the occasional when I go crazy when I get crazy white line fever in Colombia, I'll have some or you know or some Breaking Bad moment in Mexico. I'll go to town on the porn. I'll line up the tubs tabs a hundred in a row and just be and the and, and the tubs as well. Hours. I'll refill Noah's Ark, you know, with with liquid. That's how much I'll, I'll hand shandy. I'll resync the Titanic. That's how much I'll be hand shandying on the chemical induced uh, hand shandies. But generally speaking, the odd binge aside, I'm I'm very anti porn. Unless you're a male porn star, you just it's just loser behavior, really, isn't it? You're literally sitting there jacking off to some other dude getting laid. It's like on a on an evolutionary level, it's the most 
it's just the most degrading thing you can do, really, isn't it? It's like, I can't touch another woman, so I'm going to watch some <laughs> other dude banging a woman and get off yeah. that. I mean, it's, it's brilliant because we all know that most men are flannels these days, so it caters to the masses. But it's really soul-destroying, and there's loads of studies now showing how it fucks your dopamine levels and it drains your motivation. And so that's one thing I think I, I, I person, my personal take on it is guys shouldn't really watch porn. I just think it's not, it's not going to do you any favors long term. Um, and then on the actual masturbation front, the no fat front, as I get older, I realize that, yeah, if I'm masturbating a lot, my energy is just down, right? Napoleon Hill, one of the greatest con artists of all time, uh, said, <laughs> um sexual energy is everything and it's true if you can kind of take that sexual energy and channel it into productive things like going to the gym like working on the businesses like learning languages like taking up new skills you have this energy it is literally a life force inside you um and it's not to be underestimated i mean it's literally you know you can literally reproduce other humans with that stuff right we just kind of fling it away going wow you know it feels good in the moment but really um, there's been quite a lot of studies on semen retention as well and anecdotal evidence to suggest you really are energized and just a better version of yourself. So in my experience, really cutting down the masturbation. And I, I used to fucking wank a lot. Like I'm horny. So, you know, between 10 to 15 times a week as standard without porn, all visualization, all, all past, all past bones, past repertoire, but this is far too much information. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Neither of you just... <laughs> Unfortunately, it's live to massive. Great, can, can, we, can, can, we, can we cut his mic, somebody? <laughs> um, I've, anyway, but at I'm least sorry, you said so. per week. I thought you were going to go, yeah, seven to fourteen times a day. I was about to be like that <laughs> intervention since time. I, since I since I've rabbied it and snipped my consumption dramatically, um, <laughs> I've felt a lot more anxiety <laughs> focused and just with it as a man, and then so, stacking that with the, the the hormone management. I think that's. I think it's so underestimated the effect that has on just your life but, in general. Yeah, no, I think you're, I, no, listen, I mean, I, I've always been a bit of a naysayer about this stuff just because some of the people just go really over the top with what they think the effects are. But I do see, I, I think there's a lot of truth in what you're saying, definitely. And I've read the Napoleon Nutsack book as well, you know, how to, how to grow, what's it called? How, how to think and grow rich. Um, and uh, it makes a lot of sense. It, it, it definitely does. It definitely. Does it's very hard good. for me though. And I think you're the same. I think, I mean, I'm diagnosed with ADHD, right? And I'm not, I don't know. I don't know what what's going on with you, but for me, on a personal level, one of the one of the kind of symptoms of that, and not victim mindsetting at all, but something I'm prone to is is emotional. Um, basically, jumping into uh, just doing stuff spontaneously without any thought process, and, and masturbation for decades was something that I just I'd feel horny and masturbate right. So yeah. I was so used to just cracking one out whenever I wanted. It didn't matter the time, the place, the location. Mm -hmm. And so I'm literally having to untrain over dinner, myself. Over dinner with your parents. You know. What's that? <laughs> over dinner with your parents, you know. Just... <laughs> yeah. Christmas turkey needs a basic. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um... <laughs> but no, I was so used to just cracking out anytime, any place, anywhere, that I'm having to retrain <laughs> myself like some sort of ape that's being rehomed. Um, <laughs> barbarian ape that's being rehomed. And well, I think, it's, I think it's an interesting <laughs> thing. One of, the issues, one of the issues we're doing... Um, so one of the issues with the testosterone side of things, and if you're, you know, if you're optimizing that, um, it does make you, you know, it, it, it makes you, it makes you pretty horny, right? So you, so it's, I guess it's an interesting thing actually to experiment with, find out. Okay, so with that plus withholding, does that turn me into like a really supercharged version of myself? Maybe it does. It sounds like from what you're saying, it does. Give it a whirl. I mean, from my experience of, of, of kind of combining the nofap stuff, and I've only started doing it since I've been dialed in with the hormones, it supercharges me in, ev in, in everything if I could not succumb to wanking. But I get so horny and so distracted. I have to really – it takes all the might. That's not the, yeah, it. yeah. That's that's the issue. We've got a guy in here, dollar cost crypto. I don't know if this is the real Miguel or not. I is it the real Miguel? I don't know. From the things I've read and videos I've seen, test tops out after two to three weeks and starts going down. Nothing crazy. I heard it was after seven days of no fapping the the testosterone spikes, but I don't know. Could be wrong. Um, somebody wrote before. Um, what are some of the what are some of the key thing? We've coming up to half an hour. We don't want to overburden the uh, 
the masses with information. We are, well, we haven't actually given them any yet, but um, I guess we're, we're <laughs> well, the final we're round. We're going to be talking about doing day game, and we but basically spent half an hour talking about wanking. <laughs> well, it's just gone into my masturbation habits. <laughs> Why did you not stay away from that? <laughs> <laughs> Disaster. Um, what are some key mistakes guys make uh, with cold approach, do you think? I mean, the obvious one that stands out to me is just not doing the reps. And then they are doing the reps, but they're not seeing it as an overarching skill set of, of social skills. They're seeing it as put my lucky day game blazer on, go out, do my 10 approach, and then go back to my introverted ways 90% of the time. So those are kind of the two areas I think stand out as obvious. Guys just not approaching enough. It's a skill game as yeah. a numbers game. Because you have to do the numbers. I, I, think, I think another point to that as well is not having anything else going on in life. So... You know, like we've seen a lot of the time, you, if you learn to do the the fancy trick of getting a number and texting her and eventually getting on a date, there's got to be something backing that as well, right? So when you do sit on a date, you've actually got something to talk about. She can see that you're uh, just that you've got some value. You're you're a little bit could interesting. You've done having, a bit of traveling. Could you, the, could you talk about having not wanked? <laughs> you know what? As as ridiculous Maybe. As that, you probably could. And if you could, because you'd be like, look, I'm I'm on this. It's a bit like that movie with Josh Hartnett back in the day, 40 Days and 40 Nights, where mm -hmm. he goes on loads of dates and he says to every single girl, Look, I'm just not having sex now for 40 days and 40 nights. And then every single girl sees that as a challenge and tries to seduce him. So it could actually be like a thing. That could that could be quite a cool thing to try. <laughs> yeah, listen, I haven't not went out for 21 days so far. <laughs> No, 21 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Lewis. So, anyway. so, no, no. I'm just reading one of the comments here. You can pop it up on the screen. Ryan, there. even better than not wanking is wanking but not coming. Boosts test big time. I don't know how that... I, I don't know how that would work in any way, shape or form, but... Just, just yeah, there. I know what he... I kind of know well, what he means. It just kind of makes you horny and it dulls you and it makes you present, I guess. Well, that's my experience. So he's talking about edging. It's basically edging to get edge. Do you see what I did? <laughs> that's very good. That's very clever. Um, I see what you mean. So you can try that. Yeah, I, try I, that. I think I think the first the, with the day game stuff. I think the first thing is that people just aren't doing it. You know, they're not they're not doing it at all, or they're sort of. They sort of, you know, they dip their toe into the water and then they sort of, you know, oh yeah, I had a little bit of banter with the girl in Greg's you know the bakers and you know and does that count as an approach and it's like they're not really throwing themselves properly into it and then the next thing is if they are properly throwing themselves into it but they're doing it in a very nice guy sort of way and they're not sub communicating this sexual intent which as we, we're saying is the key thing really they're you know yeah and in my view right I, I, don't, I don't know what you guys think in my view the best uh, sort of interactions i have tend to be where there is a sexual you know there's a sexual undercurrent to the interaction and she's Ideally, she wants to be quite excited by having met you. You know, it's like, oh, that was exciting. That was quite a cool little thing. Maybe she messages her friends afterwards. And it's like, and then when you message her later and you send her your, you know, your, 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 your text later on or, or whenever it is, she's going to want to respond because it's like, wow, that was, yeah, this was quite sexy. This was quite cool. Like, you know, this is like a little bit of adventure sex here for me, maybe. Or this is like a little, you know, you want her to feel that. You don't want her to think. Oh yeah, that was that guy with that really good 401k, and you know he's got nice uh, prospects for getting into middle management by the end of Q3 next year. And you, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, you, again, it's it's the lover, not the provider role. Well, and and for just sure. to add to that, sure. we decide which which box we put ourselves in. It's because we can we can we can cultivate that devil may care playful sexual attitude if we want, mm. and we can do approaching in that mode and. Or you can do it in a nice guy mode, and you—it's literally how you present yourself, and the woman just takes you as you present yourself, doesn't she? Yeah, exactly. So you want to present as the fun, sexual guy, and that may mean that you get a lot of or a number of rejections because not every woman is going to be open to that, which is absolutely fine. But it also means that the women who do like you are going to be more turned on and more inclined to want to see you for the date and, and everything else. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I think agreed. I think um, the old school mindset is probably also ruining a lot of guys when it comes to day game because they're actually avoiding exactly that mindset that you're talking about now, Troy, which is so effective, which is basically just using game as a filtering mechanism. So a lot of the old school yeah. game, in my in my opinion, was an attempt to get the girl to say yes, even if she was sort of half interested. And I think mm. that's completely the wrong the wrong. Uh, 
I the wrong stance me. to take when it comes to notes me game, isn't it? it exactly, yeah. Instead of going like fuck it up, like who gives a shit if she likes me or not? Let me try and get to the no as fast as possible. All right, great. She said no. Next. And then, you know, not only do you not waste your time, but you also screen for the girls that are actually interested, right? Which in my opinion yes. is Oh, like the only point of game which is to essentially find the girls that r really vibe with you and i think that you know guys just have have faith in that it sounds a bit wishy-washy but if they genuinely have faith in that they know that if they approach enough girls they'll find ones that really like them if they're yes. working on everything else in life so that they yeah. can actually offer value right so that the guy can offer value then that's that's a recipe to to win you know that's yeah. a, that's that's true because like, what I find is when I go out, you know, if I go out and I do some some approaches or whatever, you know, usually what happens is there's a sort of a spectrum of like you know, rejections. Then there's some like lukewarm, like kind of okay conversations, but nothing yeah. special. Maybe maybe I even get a number, but it's just like, yeah. and then there's a couple. There's usually two, one, two, maybe three that I'm like that that was really strong. You know, you just know. Yeah. And you're like, I think she's, I think she definitely wants to meet. I think this is going to go somewhere. And then you message those and. Often I'm right. Some occasionally I'm wrong. Sometimes you know they they flake as well. But most of the time I'm right. You know you could just feel that you can feel that vibe. You know, and and that's what you're looking yeah. for. Now were they were they yes girls? Maybe, but but so what? You know, it's it, it's like I needed to do those reps in order to find them. And also as well, yeah. because when you, when you say it like that, Leslie, then the naysayers are going to say, well, there's no skill then. You're just looking, you know, like like you're going to get the, the, the day game purists going, oh, you know, fool's gold. You know, you're just you're just going for you're going for yes skills. There's no skill involved. You know, is they're drinking on their pint of like fucking, I don't know, uh, Tim Taylor's or whatever it is. You know, like, oh, fucking pint. Give me another pint of fullers there right now. <laughs> let, me, let me read from page 7,954 of me book. Right. You're basically going on blind fucking look. Um, but that's not that's not true either, because the reality is, even if a girl is kind of into you or there's some initial attraction, you can still fuck it up if you don't know what you're doing. And that's almost worse. And this is where the, you know, if you want to call it game, that's where it comes in. Not fucking up with the ones where there is that glimmer of interest. Because, I, I mean, I've done it myself. You could get a girl, but you just know she's really into you. And then you do something or you don't do something and then you lose her. And that's almost worse than just getting rejected off the bat. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, I was so close, but so far. Yeah. I think guys are thinking about it in, in terms of black and white thinking as well, where they go like, oh, you're either really good at game and then you can like turn most girls into yes, or you're just shit at game and you just do blanket approaching. And I think it's it's finding the sweet spot in the middle, right? Where you obviously develop your social skills, but at the same time, you develop a sense of awareness to find out which girls are actually worth going after, right? Which ones are a waste of time? And it still just surprises me so often, right? When we're talking to guys and they go like, oh, you know, I've got this one girl's number and like, she's really hot and I'm trying to get her on a date. Like, I don't know what to say. And you look at the text, she hasn't replied to his four last text over the last month. And he's like, I don't know. How am I going to re reignite this conversation? Like, it, it's not, that's, it's not like Jesus, it's not going to come back after three days. Like it's dead, like find a new one. Do you know what I mean? But so many guys get stuck on this, on this, on just trying to convert the one girl. It's just a waste of time and fight. Like, look for the no, right? The way, the way I sort of told myself this at the beginning that helped me a lot, which was like, I'm, I'm not very good right now, right? I haven't got much value to offer, but I know that if I just approach enough attractive girls, like one will say yes sooner or later, and I just have to burn through those no's as fast as possible because the faster I burn through those no's, the closer I'm going to get, right? Each no is one step closer. So that's the way I rationalized it for me. And that mm, helped yeah, a lot, it's, right? It's, it's it, very it, clever. It turned every, every failure into a success. <laughs> well, it's it's true, though, because you embrace rejection. I mean, there's a lot of rejection in this game where the girl's just not into you, right? So yeah. it is what it is. I think it's a, a, a healthier mindset. Sean makes a really good point here. Sometime, uh, not this one, uh, the earlier point he made, which was biggest fail in day game, in my opinion, is going out just to approach miles better if you have a reason to be walking down the street, e.g. shopping, going somewhere makes you far more congruent and less creepy. I actually really agree with that. So every day I've got a step counter on, and I lose the, lose the flabber, uh, fully get shredded. And one of the big things I try and do every day is do 10,000 steps. So I will deliberately walk around the city, get doing, doing the steps in, but I'll often plan to go to various shops or bars or restaurants on the way just to check them out. And then it takes the pressure off the approach itself. And it's like, oh, I'm actually doing something. Me and this guy in 
Kiev have been doing that pretty effectively. Um, when you're going out just and you're like, right, time to do this. Like, it's so much pressure you put on yourself. You're on your own. You get in your own head. You start acting weird, you know, skulking around, you know, street, <laughs> you know, on a month, rainy Monday, skulking around the, 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 near the lamps, like, the you know, the exit photo. And you feel weird, so the girl feels weird, right? So I think if the more guys can take the pressure off themselves and also focus yeah. on the process. I know it's a bullshit kind of truism to say. But if you, we've touched on this, if you can focus on the process of just becoming this charismatic, fun guy who enjoys every interaction and tries to make it fun for themselves, right? Instead of just being like, I'm just going to turn it on for the hot ones, but I'm just going to act really just stiff and awkward and serious the entire time with everyone else. Try and focus on the process of becoming a more charismatic, influential, persuasive, because they're all skill sets, person. That is liked, right? And men want to be like, and women want to bang, right? That's a far more less outcome focused on just getting laid goal. And the side effect is you'll probably get laid and make loads of friends and make loads of money. Yeah, and make of I I also think there's a little bit of a dichotomy because I think that you on the sexual side of things you need a certain degree of intensity, and that comes through with the eye contact, like the breath that you've talked about. You know that sort of strong eye contact, that kind of there's this underlying. <laughs> sexual cauldron going on under the surface but you also need to temper that with lightness as well and that's where the playful part comes in and you kind of need both of them at the same time and i think that's sort of i think that's sort of just mind-blowing for some you know, particularly for the more analytical sort of sort of dudes who maybe this this stuff is all extremely difficult for anyway to realize that you need both like if you go in super intense in some way like there's a sort of a heaviness about your vibe she's not gonna she's not gonna vibe with that either but if you go in, and we had a guy actually asking us this yesterday on our group, if you go in too playful and too much of the entertainer and the clown and the sort of, oh, yeah, I'm just a super social guy, there's no sexual edge to it, then you might make friends, uh, yad, <clears throat> but are you actually going to, um, you know, are you actually going to be getting to where you want to be dating-wise? Probably not. So you need to have both of the things. And sometimes you can alternate them. You can turn the intensity up and then you turn the, the bantering up. And sometimes you can kind of do them at the same time, which if you, again, you know, we always talk about it, but James Bond, Daniel Craig, if you look at that, you know, he can be quite light and playful, but there's an intensity in his eyes at the same time. And that's, I think, where you want to be aiming. That's a great point. Guys should just watch the Daniel Craig movies and see how he acts, because that's a very attractive, masculinized, but playful approach. Yeah. Where you are that sexual threat and you could be a, a you could be not just a sexual threat, but a physical threat to men, but you're a sexual threat to women, meant in a, a good way. Uh, but you're also oozing charisma and, and playfulness and devil may care attitude. And, and just uh, there's a great kind of made up quote, unfuck withable, right? They put it as a meme that it's like nothing anyone can do or say fucks with you. And he, he carries that. He's like, you know, getting, he's, he's in near, nearly, nearly dead and he still make cracking jokes. That that kind of vibe, you know, to bring to the table is. Are you thinking of that bit in the, in the Bond film where he's getting his nutsack with? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Christmas nutsack I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. There's Miguel, something just just before you go, just Les, one just, thing. Just before you jump in, Les, just okay. one thing, for Miguel. The textbook approach, the best approach I've ever seen on camera for Miguel for for this is Les's approach in London, um, where he stops a group of five stutters and then just separates one from the herd. And it's literally like I, I really wanted to do a voiceover where I'm David Attenborough and racing it from like the bushes. It's like separates <laughs> the wounded one, the wounded straggle from the herd, and the rest of the herd watch on because they're all like kind of. Like this bunch of meerkats, <laughs> and it's it's that is just like, uh, that was one of the few out of ten thousand in fields we put out. It's probably the only one that's actually any good, and in any context, <laughs> like anywhere. So yeah, tune it. We'll we'll put the link for that below. Um, but yeah, Les, what were you going to add? No, I think being on the topic of what guys are are doing wrong in terms of going hard and approaching, which is I think just really needing the outcome. And it's something that you can, it's, it's, it's so easy to see when a guy does it. You don't even have to watch his words, but you can just see the vibe that he's giving off. You can see the way his body's moving. Every time he says something, he's almost waiting for some form of validation. He's waiting for the girl to respond. And I, obviously there is the, the edge of, um, you know, tainting this <laughs> with um, an element of, of sexuality, right? You don't, you don't just want to go in and be the clown and, Oh, I'm just here to have fun, you know, but it, it's definitely, if you can have that in the conversations, the results will just skyrocket. 
they absolutely skyrocket. And we often see it when we're coaching someone when they start off and they're not dating many girls. You know, they're, they're operating, operating from a little from a place of slight um, scarcity and the girls can sense that. And as soon as they start dating one or two girls, they start having sex. They've got a little bit of a roster. They're getting a little bit more confidence in the bedroom. Then their results just compound and compound and compound because when they do do the approaches, their, their, their hit ratio is much higher because the girl yes. can just sense that there's something working here. And yeah. I think that's the, I, you, you can see it when you're coaching someone as well, right? You, they just, they, they have it, right? And it normally takes a while to, to develop that. And one can only really develop that after having that abundance in the life, right? So I think that's yeah. probably one of the biggest things that I've seen um, with guys. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's true. But there again, you know, then we come back to the old chicken and egg thing, don't, don't you? Because if you've got some guy, you know, watching this, and he's not pulling a muscle, then he's going to think, oh my God, so you're saying I can't, you know, you, you've, you've got to start from where you are, you know, and, and obviously sure. if you do some, you know, if you, if you say, for example, you know, do some, do, get some mentoring with us or somebody, you know, whoever, somebody else, or you, you know, or at least you're going out and doing this stuff, you've got to start from where you are. I would say fake it till you make it a little bit, you know, you want to act as if you're that, that super abundant dude, even if you're not, and tr just try and sort of, yeah. you know, fake your way through a little bit and, and you will get there eventually you will meet that that girl that likes you something will happen and then what 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 you're talking about les then that compounding effect will kick in so don't if you're if you're somebody who you know at the moment nothing's really happening for you don't don't despair you will get there but it's just that what les is saying is correct once you do get there then it starts to compound on itself and it's that's when it starts to get really good yeah, for sure, for sure. Obviously, yeah, you've got to preface it with that. Um, just because you're not banging tricks, it doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't go out and approach. But a way to almost hack this mindset is to, and it's, it's what everyone says, right? You need to, you have to want her but not need her. And that's probably one of the biggest balancing acts when it comes to having good, effective conversations with girls. But I would say one way to hack that mindset of abundance is to try to go into the conversation, obviously, with the sexual intent, so you've got that intensity there. But as well, just thinking to yourself, I want to make this as fun as possible. Like, how can I make this as enjoyable for me as possible while also conveying your sexual intent? Mm -hmm. And then it takes you away from the outcome, right? And the girl can just sense that you're genuinely there in the moment because the one thing she can definitely tell with a lot of guys is that they're there for that agenda they, they have that 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 agenda that she can just feel and, and it's just a bit weird and she's like ah oh, why is he here it's mm -hmm. like there's something that's just not aligned so i think one way to hack that is just just to say to yourself i'm going to make this as fun as possible yeah. you know so mm -hmm. that's, that's one out. way to do it if you're not having the abundance that, huh? that doubles up for night that doubles up for bar game and night game which we'll be teaching in obviously sure. in Bar, where we go out and we just try and be this kind of charismatic ball of energy and it works amazingly. It drags people in. And mm -hmm. guys want yeah. to be hanging around, you know, buying drinks. And women just get dragged in because girls just want to have fun, right? So it, it, that's that's such a better mindset, especially for nights out, because guys will typically go there standing in the corner, looking nervous, eyes darting around. It's like, fuck that. Just go and charge around, have as much fun as possible. And it, crazy things happen in that kind of, especially when you you combine that attitude with just the craziness of, of going out and places like Mexico City and Bogota, where they're already very fun and souped up, passionate kind of people, aren't they? And mm. you're throwing you know, some alcohol into the mix and, and some drugs. And it's just, it's just fucking wildfire in terms of fun. Just, and even if you don't get laid, I mean, it's the best conditions to create to get laid. But even if you don't get laid, you go home going, that was a fucking blast. And you genuinely had fucking fun, right? Mm, mm, yeah absolutely absolutely should we we've been on for 48 minutes um i guess we'll have to bring it to a close fairly soon should we go through any of the questions sure any relevant ones uh probably not um <laughs> <laughs> find yes girls instead of focusing on the no and maybe girls that's that's so true and um look there was a kind of a, a, another dating meme but it's very very true actually which is if you're if a woman's interested you'll know and if she's not, you'll just be confused, right? And it's so true because if you think about it, the, the coin of the female realm was attention. They're going to rec occasionally reply to you if they're not really interested. They're going to kind of avoid your meetups, but then maybe like a photo on Instagram because they like attention. They want to feel wanted, right? If you ask a girl out and she comes out, she is keen until she stops coming out and stops messaging you. Then she's no longer keen. Mm. So I think guys get very confused with this, don't they? 
Um, yeah, also as well, there's a good point here. He says, post uh, Excel self, post-game analysis is dumb. Trying to understand why a woman wasn't available is honestly a waste of time. You'd have to be a clairvoyant. And I, th I think that's true. I think we can get into a lot of analysis paralysis with this stuff over individual girls. You know, and we get this a lot as workers, as coaches. You know, we'll get guys saying, oh, you know, this happened with this particular girl. And they'll, they'll you know, they'll send you an email that's like, so, you know, you've got to scroll down 500 times to, you know, to read the whole story. And it's basically he got blown out by some bird or she, she, she ghosted him. And it's like, so what do you think happened? You know, what did I do wrong? And it's like, well, you know, I, I mean, we can speculate, but we don't really know because we're not inside our head. We don't know what's happening in our life. And, and to be quite frank, it, it, it doesn't matter anyway. She's either in your bed or she's not. And if she's not, you know, the medium is the message. She's probably not interested. She's probably off talking someone else. And, and you need to be moving on to the, you know, to new opportunities. And I think, as we were saying earlier, James, before the stream, you've got to, you can only really measure how you're doing over time and over lots and lots and lots of separate interactions. You can't really glean too much information from just one, one interaction with one girl because there are so many variables at play there. Track the stats. But one time post-game analysis is not dumb is in Mexico City because we record all your approaches on a 4K camera with externalized audio and then we sit down and actually view it and when we can see alongside you're watching it as well, your body language, your verbals, we can start to diagnose and see the patterns in behavior, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. We do that for dates yeah. as well. So post-game analysis, when you're trying to ruminate on what you were doing in the moment is impossible, but it's not impossible when we've actually filmed the approach and we've got the audio and we can sit down and analyze it knowing what we know. So that's mm. where it's not it's actually useful to do. Yeah. You have to feel the emotion connected with the thought for the mind to believe it. That's that was it. Joe Dispenser, that's the quack dude I was talking about with the vision. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it also just comes back to just the bread and butter of all of this, which is approaching. I think often some guys will, the like problems. you said, Troy, yeah, a lot of the problems will just fix themselves. They'll just auto-correct. It's like, you're being too needy over text. Well, you know, go and approach more. I don't know how to sexually escalate. Like approach more. Uh, I don't have abundance. I approach more. Because um, most guys are normal. You obviously you get some creepy crawlers coming, sneaking through the woodwork. But most guys will fix their problems if they just approach. Like most of the problems just come from guys not having enough experience. So it's not about trying to convince the one girl who's not responding to the text to come out. Because if she's not responding to your text to come out, m most of the time that's that relationship is doomed anyway. So go out, there are many fish in the sea, and just approach. Just approach. Testing There's so many. And this is the thing. Sorry? The testing for interest mentality, I think, is so key because you just see is the individual yeah. interest or interest. And you see over an, a, a, an amount of reps. Uh, you are always going to find girls who are interested and, and down to fuck. And we, I had this mm -hmm. with the guy I was with. He's a good looking German dude. He's walking around the streets, you know, uh, and he was getting a lot of no's. But then every few days, he just finds a girl who's super into him and it's just game on immediately. And it's no, it's just so easy for him. And, I, and then we sit down, and he's like, wow, it's I'm so sorry. easy when I just find a girl who actually likes me. I'm no, like, yes, I'm sorry. It, it's fucking filtering through. I'm sorry, James. I can't let that pass. That's not good. <laughs> that's not Durgum. <laughs> that's He's not, not 16 uh, sitting outside Zotti Sarasi sucking on a lollipop with her parents. No, but I mean, oh. so, you know, in all seriousness, but there would be naysayers who would say, well, you're just looking for yes girls then, so that's not good. You know, look at look at my book, look at page 793 in my book, you know? So what would you say to that? It's a good question. I think, um, I think as long as, I think guys can, I think there are some guys that will spam approach and literally big game hunt and bang anything with a pulse. And I think that is casting a net out and, and fishing yeah. very low. But I think if you're genuinely approaching doing the Terraria definition of game, which is girls younger and hotter than you, then yes, I do think when you've got your value in place to a certain degree, it becomes a numbers game. I really do, right? And it's, I don't, th I think we overcomplicate it massively. Before all this fucking industry was invented 20 years ago, human beings have been getting laid for millions of years, right? Mm. All this shit just overcomplicates it really, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And as I said before, I think the other counter argument to that is that um, you also need the skill set, even if you meet a girl who is theoretically a yes girl, you know, a girl who is initially attracted to you, you can still fuck that up if you don't know what you're doing. Mm. You really can. And I think that's where the skill really comes in. Just not fucking yeah, up. I think, yeah. Spectacular. Mm. 
I think lots of people view this as, as black and white, though. They're like, you either spam approach and you've got no game and, like, the girl just comes straight home with you because she's keen or you you try and convince every girl. And, like, I, I think there's a sweet spot in the middle, right? There is. And I think there is. Being, you know, being good at game, um, having good social skills, working on your life, you know, not being a fucking weirdo, dressing well, being in good shape, being fit, being healthy, um, being calibrated, and then just testing for interest. I think that's the sweet spot, right? I agree. I think that's a very healthy way to to, dial, to, to approach. And if guys haven't listened to Testing for Interest chapter, uh, send us an email, troy at realtorofrancis.com or info at com. include your WhatsApp number, and we'll point in the right direction to that book as trying to relentlessly sell a place on the Mexico City boot camp to you. Well, let's, um, actually, that's what we're talking about. Let's play the trailer. Oh, yeah. Who's this sumo wrestler? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, gorgeous George there he is why does it just kind of come uh, out oh here we go so anyway so um, yeah so we're running a boot camp in Mexico City very soon very soon so if you want to join us you should get in touch because it's going to be bloody awesome isn't it it really is it's the only time we're going to be together in the next yeah, probably. All of us in one place. Don't say that. Apart from, obviously, Wigan and Ro Rochdale. One trick pony. I'm heading to Wigan and Rochdale for the young council. Melf's good lad. We'll see you there. Yeah. I like this guy here as well. JD said every girl is younger and hotter than me. I feel you, man. I know what you're saying. My pool is very large now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have, have a good day game, guys. Please tell me that's that's he's, he's, uh, he's written that as a serious comment. Have a good day game, guys. Who's Paul Jones? Um, I don't know. I don't know. No idea. But anyway, come to Mexico because you're going to be a blast. When is it? 5th to the 8th of October. 5th to the 8th of October. Uh, you get loads of fucking pre and post uh, coaching support involved as well. Um, we have loads of follow-up phone calls. We record you during the whole time on, you know, shoot the audio, shoot the visual, give you all that content, break it down with you. Um, you'll meet some other very cool, like-minded guys. And we also know Mexico City very well. Between us, we've spent many, many months there. So we know all the best spots for day game, night game, date spots, restaurants. It's just a fucking amazing place, Mexico City. One of my favorite places in the world once you actually have it mapped out and we have it mapped out. Absolutely. And there's some very, very attractive ladies there as well. It has to be said. And it's a very sort of elegant, sophisticated place as well, isn't it? Particularly the areas we go to. I mean, people have this idea about Mexico and, you know, like, I don't know, churro vans in the street or something. But it's not like that. It's a very, very cool place. Very cool bars and restaurants and things like that. It's really upscale. I mean, if you got dropped in the area we hang out in and you didn't know where you were, you'd assume it was, and you didn't hear people speaking, you'd assume it was somewhere somewhere in, in the Anglosphere, a very high-end area. It's almost yeah. Mayfair-esque, isn't it, in terms of yeah. how beautiful and, and, and nice and safe it is so mm, yeah it's mm. an amazing place so if you're interested in that then get in touch we've got a few spots left so you can email troy at realtroyfrancis.com or info at james tusk.com and uh we'll have a put your whatsapp details and then we'll have a we'll have a chat and when are we next, con next convening on youtube friday. friday okay so one friday 1 p.m um London time. Friday, 1 p.m. Yeah, email us on those email addresses if you're interested in Mexico. It's going to be a blast. Yes, indeed it will. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, thanks especially to the guys on the edge who are watching this. You guys are going to smash it. And uh, we'll see you again very soon.